Our help is in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the 28th Wednesday in Ordinary Time. And the church today remembers St. Edward the Confessor. Edward was born back in 1003, that's over a thousand years ago, and he died in 1066. He was the king of England, and he is the first Anglo king to be canonized as a saint. He is especially known for his holiness and the way that he ran England in a godly way. And so today we ask St. Edward the Confessor to please pray for us. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. <coughs> Let's say together the second form of the confidier. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God your penance, I would ask you to do one kind thing for someone else sometime in the next few days. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the man who made not God the source of his strength, but put his trust in his great wealth and his strength in harmful plots. But I, like a green olive tree in the house of God, trust in the kindness of God for ever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have promised a wealth of wisdom and insight. Save us from our own conceit, that we may live our lives according to your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You, O man, are without excuse every one of you who passes judgment. For by the standard by which you judge another, you condemn yourself, since you, the judge, do the very same things. We know that the judgment of God on those who do such things is true. Do you suppose then, you who judge those who engage in such things, and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you hold his priceless kindness, forbearance, and patience in low esteem, unaware that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance? By your stubbornness and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself. For the day of wrath and revelation of the just judgment of God, who will repay everyone according to his works, eternal life to those who seek glory, honor, and immortality through perseverance in good works, but wrath and fury to those who selfishly disobey the truth and obey wickedness. Yes, affliction and distress will come upon everyone who does evil, Jew first, then Greek. But there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, Jew first, then Greek. 
There is no partiality with God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God is my soul at rest. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed at all. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Only in God be at rest, my soul, for from him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Trust in him at all times, O my people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in the synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you scholars of the law! You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our readings today, we have some very harsh words. First from St. Paul in his exhortation to the people of Rome, the Romans, and then from Jesus in Luke's gospel. Paul, he is warning us that we should not judge others. Indeed, God is the only one who can judge because if we judge, then we'll be judged by the same measure. And we don't have that infinite mercy, kindness, and forgiveness of God who calls us to repentance. And if we are judging, we are saying, in, in effect, that we are not in need of repentance, which we all are. We need to repent of those things we have done that have offended God and others. That, my brothers and sisters, is key, key to our salvation because every day we make decisions that go against God pretty much. And then even harsher words come from our Savior who is really piling it on to the Pharisees because what he's saying is that basically what they're doing is external stuff and they're not paying attention to the state of their own souls. Yeah, they can give the tithes, they can take the seats of honor, they can get the greetings in the markets, but if they're not configured to Christ, to God, then Everything else is in vain because he also then has a scholar of the law, which is kind of like a lawyer, okay? And he's, a, he's feeling the insult too. And then Jesus has words for him too, that you make laws for others, but you don't even follow them yourselves. Brothers and sisters, how... Have we been guilty of that in our lives? 
that we have imposed burdens on people we would not impose on ourselves. We need to look at ourselves in the mirror sometimes and reflect on what exactly it is we're doing. Are we judging? Are we putting undue burdens on people that we don't even expect ourselves to follow? Are we just doing the outward show or are we doing the inward stuff first in the outward show, f letting that flow out of it? So things we need to reflect on individually and even corporately sometimes in our families, our communities, our churches, those are hard things. Those are hard lessons. But heaven has a high price. In fact, it requires us to give everything, our entire being, to Christ. But even though the price is the highest we will ever pay, it is worth every single penny, and it will even be the best bargain that we will ever get. But only if we're willing to pay the price which is everything. Hell and damnation are cheap. Salvation, well, that costs us everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. All things are possible for God. With faith in Jesus' promise, let us offer our prayers and petitions to him. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the church, that they may humbly proclaim the living and effective word of God, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may work together to provide all peoples with justice and dignity, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the devoted priests, bishops, deacons, parishioners, and all the living and deceased who have built a tradition of faith, love, and service to this parish and this church, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may find comfort in the healing touch of God and in the loving care of family and friends, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts, and for all your intentions that you bring forward to this Mass, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones and those who will die today, that they may dwell in Christ's abundant love for all eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for everything you have done for us. Help us to find in your holy word the source of wisdom and truth. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The rich man is wise in his own eyes, but a poor man is intelligent, who is intelligent, sees through him. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. O Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. 
receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Lord our God, you have promised an abundance of blessings to those who are faithful. May we who offer this sacrifice recognize our stewardship and so fulfill our responsibility in your sight. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Out of love, you called us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life, and by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. And so with trust, we commend our day to your fatherly care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 5, which is found on page 92, if you're following along. Blessed are you. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation, on the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself. He took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks and blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on a cross. Therefore you've raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth every knee shall bow and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer this sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, Paul Willibrod, and all the saints, especially Edward the Confessor, whom we remember today together with Anthony, with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Jerry, our bishop, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Come a blessing which we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord, Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let's say together the second communion prayer on page 98. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness. May it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. The reward of humility and fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we have received this gift of Holy Communion from you. Forsaking all else, may we always set our eyes on you, in whom our reward cannot be measured. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. 
Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant not so much that I may seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life, it 